Welcome back to Huff Daddy Barbecue. Today, let's talk about the top tools I think you need in your barbecue repertoire to make for a successful cook. Now, you might not, depending on the level uh, that you're barbecuing at, if you're a competition, if you're backyard, if you're doing it for friends, if you're doing it for a business, you may not need every single one of these tools that I'm gonna be talking about today. Some of them, like the smoker, a knife set, you'll definitely need those. But some of the other things we go over, if you can afford it, if you can look into it, you think it's gonna help you cook better, by all means, consider it. You know, Otherwise, just take it as a general list, a guideline of things that might be nice to have before you're preparing your next barbecue event. All right, so let's get started. The most important tool is a high quality smoker, and I absolutely love my Yoder YS 1500 pellet grill. It is built to last and made right here in the USA and comes with great customer support. I love the versatility of my pellet smoker as it allows me to grill or sear items hot and fast or smoke low and slow. Changing the flavor from the smoke is easy as a variety of pellet flavors are now available online or at most local hardware stores. Whether you choose a stick burner, cabinet, pellet, or ceramic cooker, make sure you get one with a large enough capacity for the amount of food you will be cooking. And remember, a high quality smoker may cost you more money up front, but it will definitely pay for itself in the long run and provide you with many, many years of great results. I can't stress enough the importance of a good thermometer so you can accurately tell when your food has reached the desired doneness. At a minimum, you should have at least an analog unit like the one you see here, which takes a little longer to display the temp, but it will get the job done. For a small investment, you can get a digital instant read thermometer like this one. This is a Thermapin brand and is probably the most widely used thermometer by chefs, competition pitmasters, and backyard enthusiasts. It has an easy to read display that will rotate based on position and is fast and accurate displaying the temperature within a tenth of a degree in less than three seconds. It also has a great backlight feature to make it easy to read in low light conditions and an auto shut off feature to prolong battery life. For larger longer cook time items such as briskets, turkeys, or prime ribs, you may also want to invest in a leave-in thermometer that will measure the internal temp of your food while it's cooking. There are many models and brands on the market now with options like multiple probe ports and Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity so you can monitor your cook from your phone. You can also set alarms to warn you when your food has reached the desired temperature or dedicate a probe to monitor the inside temperature of your smoker. Yoder has combined with one of the leading names in the industry, Fireboard, as a standard offering on their new S line of smokers. With Wi-Fi connectivity, you have full functionality control of your smoker to monitor and change temps remotely and even receive alerts on your phone. This takes precise temperature monitoring of your food and smoker to a whole new level. You need a good set of knives that are always sharp, both to help you with food preparation as well as keep you safe since sharp knives actually cause less accidental injuries than dull knives do. You don't have to spend a lot of money, just get the best set of knives that your budget will allow. A good set of knives is one that feels good in your hand, will hold up to heavy use, and holds its edge well with minimal maintenance. Which type of knives to include in your set depends on what you do with them. For most barbecuers, that means a chef's knife for general use, a boning knife for trimming and prepping, a good slicer for roasts and briskets, and a good pair of kitchen shears for things like poultry and small bones. You may also want to include a cleaver, paring knife, or other specialty knife to suit your needs. Be sure to wash and dry your knives after every use, and I recommend washing all knives by hand, as the extreme temperatures of your dishwasher can harm the knives over time. If you are going to be cooking at places besides your home, I like having a knife roll. It is convenient to grab and go and holds all the knives and items you would need in one location. It is important to keep your knives sharp, so you want a good quality honing device to help keep that sharp edge. The basic steel you see here will work, but I prefer a diamond steel. This design helps hold the small particles that flake off during the honing process and a couple of passes before and after each use of the knife will keep your knives at ready for optimal performance. 
I know, they are just gloves, but you have a lot of options to choose from and different gloves are better to use when doing different things. I like a powder-free nitrile glove for handling raw meat or cooked meat that you are cutting or serving. These gloves are disposable and can help prevent contamination during food prep and decrease the amount of times you have to wash your hands. Along with the disposable nitrile gloves, these cotton glove liners are great to use underneath to help protect your hands when handling hot food, like taking brisket and ribs out of the smoker to wrap or pulling apart that pork butt that is still a little too warm to handle. If you don't want to go the disposable route, a variety of silicone gloves are available. Gloves like this can handle higher temperatures than the cotton and nitrile gloves, but in my opinion, they are not easy to take on and off, hard to clean, and too bulky for most tasks. To really amp up your game, you will want an injector to get flavor down into your meat. For smaller jobs, a basic injection needle like this one will work fine. Depending on the needle gauge, you will want to strain your injections to remove any solids from passing through and clogging the needle. Ensure you clean the needle thoroughly, including between uses if you are switching from one meat type to another, like poultry to pork or beef. If you will be injecting a large quantity of meats on a regular basis, you might want to invest in an injector like this one. It uses a power spray system that allows injection to flow at the squeeze of a trigger and can use up to four needles at one time. It also has different gauge needles to use for different meats and injections and can hold a larger volume of injection liquid at one time. Not gonna lie, a system like this can be a little pricey, but could be well worth the money. Whether you're putting out flare-ups or spritzing your meat, you will want a spray bottle. A basic spray bottle from the local grocery store will work fine, but for me, those have not proven to be very durable and always, always find a way to start leaking. I prefer a bottle that uses pressure to provide a continuous spray. This one works great, feels very comfortable in my hand, and has an adjustable brass nozzle that is both durable and gives me flexibility in how much volume of liquid is coming out of the sprayer. I also found this type to work better if the liquid you use to spritz contains any type of oil or small particles. If you are ever going to brine meat like whole turkeys, chicken, or pork butts, you will need a vessel large enough to do the job. You can certainly use a pot or storage container, but you may have to find something heavy to hold the meat down to ensure it stays submerged. This is called the briner and comes in different sizes. It is made of heavy duty plastic and can hold several chickens or a very large turkey. It is also narrow enough to fit in your fridge so you don't have to keep changing out the brine or adding ice. What I like most about the briner is a special plate that can lock at different heights inside to hold the meat down under the brine and ensure it stays submerged. It's very easy to clean and can be used to store items in when you aren't using it for brining. Last but not least, I really recommend a vacuum sealer. Generally speaking, it takes the same amount of effort and resources like time and fuel, whether you are smoking one item or multiple items. So I recommend filling your smoker up each time you cook and using the vacuum sealer to store and freeze items to enjoy later. There are many available models to choose from and whatever you decide to spend, you will make that money back in cost savings. It is also great if you want to take advantage of buying large cuts of meat or meat in bulk, portioning out the meat yourself and sealing it in individual bags for storage. This particular model comes with an accessory for vacuum sealing reusable containers as well, so you can store sauces and sides airtight in the fridge and extend their usage. Finally, a vacuum sealer is a must if you ever want to try cooking sous vide with an immersion circulator. But that's for another video. So there you go. Those are my things that I think you should have in your barbecue arsenal when you're back there in the backyard trying to prepare the absolute best barbecue you can. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and in the comment section if there's anything you think I left off the list, please let me know. I'd be happy to hear from you. Again, thanks for watching Huff Daddy Barbecue and see you next time.